Hello friends, it's Jiftesh from Encode Digital. In this session, we will look to see how we can deploy our Flask web application and Flask REST API along with Redis and MySQL to Docker uh, within the virtual private server um, to the Linux or even dedicated server on the Linux and in, in the production. Now, I would be stressing heavily on the security aspect of that one, how we can deploy it securely. The reason for that one is if you have developed any application, um, the next thing you want to take is you want to take it to the customers and uh, and the, the way they want to use it you want it the secure part of that one not just the deployment and that's the uh, intent of uh, the, the session is that if you have created an application how you can deploy end-to-end -end, including including the domain name pointing the domain of your uh, website or the API to do to your uh, containers securely along with the for the HTTPS with SSS certificates so for that one we will use the Nginx uh, proxy manager which can manage uh, the SSL certificates um, uh, setup and the renewals and also from the API perspective then we will see okay uh, how we can rate limit it so even if you are not publishing the API for the rest of the world but you are using it how you can uh, make sure that no one is uh, misusing it and how you can put the rate limit and that's the reason we're going to use radis and also it's not only the deployment you want to see how you're going to support it means we we want to lock down our uh, virtual machine uh, with with the firewalls because uh, we only want to open the ports which we want to now uh, for especially for the mysql uh, so what the way we will do is we'll have the persistent storage but you want to access the mysql in if you're supporting the application what we don't want to do is that to open up the port for the public uh, because that can uh, you know the security aspects of that one we don't want to do that so what in uh, how we want to do that one is that we want to enable the ssl on the mysql so that only you as a machine supporting the application can access the mysql via mysql workbench or any other uh, gui or even with the command line but only you can access that one along that one so that is so we'll cover all the, those sort of things that's the reason i wanted to start this flux series especially from the deployment side because deployment as i think is the key uh, development is the fun part which we all love to do it but when it comes to the uh, deployment there are a lot of small small things uh, which want to make sure the server is secure and i want to cover from that side first let's look into the steps we will cover for this deployment and very first thing what we will do is that we will look into the the stock uh, flask api and the website i have created is small one but we will see how we can dockerize it how we can use the docker compose yaml to bring all the services for the api website redis and mysql together then we will look into how we can enable the MySQL with SSL certificates so that when it is deployed to production, it is deployed securely. And then we will update our Flask API and website so that it can talk to the MySQL via SSL certificates rather than just by username and password. Then in the next part, we will see how we set up a VPS for our production. And in this one, we will have a bare bone um, uh, virtual server and we will lock down the root access, enable the SSH, we will set up the firewall, we will install the Docker. So we'll get it ready so that we can ship our application to the production. Then in our third part, we will look into set up the domain so we will buy a domain and then we will point that domain to the virtual machine which we have set up and then we will set up an nginx proxy manager uh, for the ssl certificates for the https from the let's encry uh, encrypt and then we will deploy our application and we will have multiple containers running for our api and the website to make it more scalable and then we will see how nginx can load balance that one we will enable redis to support the api rate limiting although we will install the redis in the local as well but i will not enable for the api limiting because i want to show you the difference so we will show you the difference when i will when we look into the production that uh, how in the redis helps in the api rate limiting 
and then the last we will i will cover all the bonus scripts but basically it's all a lot of manual activities how we can automate most of the stuff and then the other uh, tips how you can manage between the development and the production environment for example to docker compose yaml rather than changing the same how we can split the docker compose yaml into the multiple docker compose so that it combines itself for the production and for the development so all the good stuff coming guys so let's deep dive into it okay guys let me quickly show you the flask api and the web application which we're going to use for the deployment so i've quickly go to the file structure so we have the apis over here it is quite a simple api it's not big one um, i will quickly go through that one then we have the environments folder which is our virtual environment and the web application where we have the template and the web application and the environment for the local because we're going to use the mysql database so i have already the mysql running on my local machine uh, on 3306 port and uh, basically this application is related to the stocks i have the top 10 stocks of the nasdaq and so basically it has the data uh, for one year so we will be showing that data via api and via the web application as well so let me quickly show you the app so if let me um yeah first of all uh, enable the environment so go to the api and let me run first the api and i will show you so it is python run dot py because our with an api folder our run file is python so where we are running on the in the debug mode in, in the development environment so let me quickly make that one and let me run this one so this is my the home root uh, basically i'm showing the container uh, so right now it is working only on the host there is no container so it is showing that one but the reason i have kept that one is because when we're going to spun up this uh, api as well as the app uh, into the multiple containers then i want to show you how the load balancing works and whenever we hit refresh it comes from the different container each time which helps us with the traffic so if i go to the because uh, what we have as an api we're going to show the stock so if i go to the apple stock then it shows us all the data for the last one year so that is our api and we have um, other as well for tesla we have again the record for that one if we don't have any of the table for example let's say let's say costco um, so of course the record not found so that is our api and now let me quickly show you the web application as well so i'm going to cd into website and python in website i have created web.py uh, I kept separate names so that you don't guys don't get confused and it is clear enough when I'm running on the API which is API and when I is website it is a web.py so if I do that one then again running on that one so let me take that out and this is our web application which is basically uh, displaying the stock data so it gets all the table names from the database and based on the each of the ticker then it loads the data for, for, for one year. So this is our application. So again, like I mentioned, the application and the API is very simple, uh, but I just want to, uh, because this session is more focused on the deployment side, how we can deploy securely and, and scalable. Uh, so I've kept the simple, but of course the application can be replaced by any small, medium or large uh, application so another thing actually i wanted to show was the rate limiting so let me go back to the api and let me run that one again uh, python run dot pi and now if i go back to the api and if i try to run it more than one minute one two three four five and six see now you have exceeded your limit so we have hit more than um five so this is the way we can 
uh, basically um, prevent any, any misuse of, of our API. I'm using the flux limiter for our API limiting. So right now I am using the uh, basically the, the uh, machine memory itself, uh, the usage. But when we deploy into the production, we will use Radis. Um, I will not do now. The reason is that I want to show you guys when I deploy to the production and if you don't use Radis, then the API limiting will not that work because if you spun up into different containers and then each container has its own memory. So that uh, if, we, if we don't put Radis, then where I am right now, for example, for this route, I am limiting it to five hits per minute. So if it goes to each and every container, it will be more than five. That's the reason I will show you where I will change that in production when I put the Redis and then you will see the difference. And that is the reason we need Redis. Uh, so, okay, so now uh, this is all running in our um, local machine. So what we want to do is we want to dockerize our application so that we can ship into our uh, ship over to our uh, virtual machine and then we run into production. So let's do that one. So we're going to do API. We'll create the Docker file. And for this tutorial, I will not type each and everything. The reason is that we have a lot to cover and rather than typing practice, I just want to explain each and every line. The main objective for me is I can give the understanding. So I'm going to copy a couple of things and but I will go line by line to explain why we are doing that one uh, rather than just typing. So in the Docker file, basically Docker file, uh, we're going to it is used to create the the, the image for the container. So when we're going to run as a container, what steps it need to follow because it is a blank, uh, I would say, uh, you know, blank slate. So very first thing here we are doing is from the uh, Docker Hub. So we're going to get the image of Python, uh, which is um, we're going to use the Alpine uh, distro, which is the uh, very, very small one, mainly used for within the Docker. And then we're going to set the working directory uh, API. So this will be the working directory within the uh, within the container, and we will going to copy dot dot means we're going to copy everything from here into the working directory. So we're going to copy db docker file run py, and uh, so they, they, they everything will be copied over there. Then right now within the, our um, local environment, uh, we we run during development via uh, virtual environments as you have seen earlier. Uh, so what uh, when we run in the container, then uh, it needs to know which packages, for example, Flask, Flask Limiter, and all those packages, they are, they are not there. So we have to install those ones. And the way we can do is that we have the requirements file. Now, as you can see, we don't have requirements file. So let's quickly make it. So I, we need to make it within the API. So let me quickly make it. So uh let me first of all enable the environment again and i'm going to go to the env scripts and then activate sorry if i can type uh, activate and then let me go back to um our api folder okay so now on the, in the api folder what we can do is pip freeze and then require maps dot txt so this way it will create the requirements file as you can see it just came up over here I come over here so the only thing is in my local environment because i'm using the application environment we not i haven't installed the gunicorn as you can see gunicorn is not a package over here but in the docker we're not going to use the application um means flask web server we're going to use the unicorn uh, which is the http, Visgi http server uh, which is used for the production as well so i'm going to install that one so i will add here so when it runs the requirement file it's going to install all these packages so that's what this um, run pip install will do uh, it will install all the packages and then we're going to say okay the, uh, i'm going to run g, g unicorn and g unicorn going to bind uh, the port um, 8080 now our Flask application by default runs on the port 5000, but I don't want to run on 5000, I want to run on 8080. So the way we can do is, and I want to bind it to the 000 so that uh, IP address so that it can be uh, publicly available. And then this line does is, is ask, okay, uh, where is the Flask app? So we know that our Flask app is in the run by, so it is run, and within run app is our 
uh, object which which were flask object which we want to run so that's uh, this command does and it's going to create now in our run.py we are running app to run debug true which of course we know that it run by default on 127.0.01 as ip address and 5000 port so i need to change this one so i need to change host and i need to change it to 0, 0, 0 and i need to say port 8080 because that's what we are binding in the g unicorn so so that should do and i want to copy the we need to set up the same thing for a website as well so this was in the api folder so i can copy both of these files and can paste here few changes of course within the docker file of the website uh, again we want the same python package uh, means python image from the docker hub that's fine but i will change this uh, a working directory to web again everything within the website uh, templates docker file db.py everything it's going to copy into that one again it's going to run the our pip install uh, install all the packages now of course right now because my application is using the same packages it is not using anything different so i'm going to use the same requirements but if you are developing and you have a separate environment for your application a separate environment for api so run again the uh, pip freeze requirements in, in in the environment you're using for application for me it is the same so that's the reason i'm reusing the same packages over here means uh, the requirement text files so it's going to install the same packages in that container uh, now again uh, this is again a flask application so i want to run yg unicorn in the production and i want to bind uh, the again uh, 00, 00 ip address to so that i can host it publicly and then uh, this one i want to run on 8081 and here in in our website we don't have the run pi actually we have the web pi so we need to specify which file where where is the flask application it is in the web so if you have a different name if you have app.py means whatever the name so it needs to be that one and within that one what is your object so my object over here is is still app uh, I'm, I'm, I'm loading app object as a flask so within a web it is the app so that's how our docker file is for both of them now one thing is again same thing on the web by we need to change the rather than running as a debug and on the as a 5000 so i'm going to change it the host to 0 .0 0 0.0.0 and then the port we said for this one is 8081 so that's how we're going to bind it okay so that's creates the docker file so basically okay when we try to create a container so it will look into the docker file of each of them for the api and for the website and then it will knows how from where to pull the images and what commands it need to run but apart from these two we want to have the redis mysql because our application works on the sql and all these containers need to talk to each other so how we can do that once so for that again um in our overall so i want to docker compose yaml so let me see if that's docker compose going to give the set of the instruction for all the containers and have a and when we set up a network it will help us to combine all of those ones so and again i'm going to copy uh the because i already created docker compose file uh going to copy but i will go line by line because uh, i have a lot to cover i don't want to spend too much time on the typing rather i want to spend my time on talking about each and every line so that you can see okay so docker compose so this is simple so what it is basically it specifies the version of the docker compose so we're using the version 3 and then the two main things are there one is services so it is a yaml so it is um, needs to be indented as we do in a python so uh, make sure in services section so we have api we have our website we have our redis we have mysql and but so these are services we want to run but then we want to combine those ones the same network so they can talk to each other so i have created a networks my net and the driver for that one is a bridge and then if i go back and i i will explain each and every on what how it is set up so within an api so you can name it anything okay i have created name it as api 
and then um, telling okay how it should build from where it should build because we have specified the docker file so it's going to uh, within build it's specifying the context api so now this api is the folder name so if you have a different name then it needs to be that one okay so this need to match with the folder so where are where is the docker file basically it is it's going to look for the docker file within that uh, within that folder now the next one deploy replicas now this is our how we're going to uh, scale it so right now with because i'm going to run this one again in the local environment right now we will leave it one but when we ship this one to the virtual server then i'm going to increase it then you will see a um, how we can scale easily so we just need to change okay how many replicas we want and then uh, with the uh, uh, nginx uh, proxy manager which is not there right now so that is another service we will add when we go to the production but that then can handle the load balancing of that one again on next one on the ports so as we know our api is running on 8080 so this is the host this is the container uh, port okay so that's how we map so if we don't specify then the the and port is not exposed so it is only running within the container you will not be able to access it so in order to access that one so i am going to i'm, I'm mapping to the my local host which is right now my machine but when we go to the virtual server it will be your virtual server as a host so i'm mapping to the same port 8080 uh, from the host uh, to the container then I'm going to link the Redis. Although in right now in app I am not using the Redis. I am uh, the Flask limiter is using the memory cache right now. Um, but uh, it when we will make more replicas, when we're going to scale application, it's not going to work. It needs some common storage because then only when the uh, the traffic is coming to different containers, it can talk to the common storage and see how many hits it had in that one minute or something like that so that's the reason so i'm saying links to redis so basically it will be uh, it, it is dependent on the redis and then we have the depends upon mysql definitely what depends on means is that it will wait for mysql although mysql is written down but it will wait for mysql to be up and running as a container before it will spun up uh, the api one and we want the, and again this name is exactly what we specify here I could specify uh, my SQL 5 then I need to change over there okay so whatever the name you have given it depends on there and same thing for the links as well as linked to the Redis then the restart always so if, if your machine is restarted or you're done then it should be restarted automatically and then the environment file okay so now until now we were using environment local so these are the details for my uh, my sql and everything on my local machine but for the production we need to load the env so let me create one env file so dot env and on in the env let me first of all copy, copy all the stuff and going to change it okay i'm going to change it the environment is now docker the host is uh, so db host is mysql now again this is exactly the name which you're going to use for your container of the mysql so in my case it's mysql and i'm going to run on the 3306 which is default port uh, i'm db user i'm going to keep it root but i'm going to change the password i'm going to create it in code digital okay and then I'm going to use, of course, our databases stocks. Now, when we run a container, it will not have the stocks database. And that is the reason I have um, SQL um, uh, for that one. So when we will create uh, MySQL, then we're going to load this one. So it's going to create the database stocks and then create all the tables and then it's going to load all the data into that one. And then um, I will quickly come to MySQL because then we will have the persistent storage. And even if your container is down, then we can, it will keep all the data. So that is there. And then the other thing we want to do is in production, we want to specify the MySQL root password. So root uh, password. And that I'm going to keep same as well. So let me grab this one. Okay. So that is our environment file now with this environment file so it's going to load the environment file so then because in our uh, in our application we are using as we are connected with the database so it is uh, in order for PyMySQL to connect it needs all the db host and everything so that's the reason it will pick it from the environment 
the next one is volumes uh, hang on that one i will come to that one when we when i quickly go through my sql so hold for that one and networks like i mentioned we created a network and we want all containers to talk to each other on the same network that's the reason they are talking they will be able to communicate with each other same thing for the web and now again uh, for our website uh, the all the docker file is in or every all the other files are in the website folder so whatever the name of your folder you give that right now i'm going to create one replica only for my local machine but we will expand that when we put into the virtual machine we are running on 8081 the website so i'm going to map to the same port on the host uh, it depends upon my sql as well uh, because we show all the stock information which we get from the database it uh, should restart always environment file we're going to same use the same because it is the same uh, configuration and again i will come onto the volume and then on the networks we are using the same networks on the redis now for redis uh, we have specified image where which we haven't specified for ABI, uh, api and the website the reason for that one is because we had created the docker file and in the docker file we mentioned about the image so for those ones it is getting the image but it is getting via the docker file but for the redis we haven't created any docker file so we specify okay which image you're going to use and you're going to use the redis image from the docker hub and it's going to pull that one and then it create a redis one again same thing restart and usually we want to have on the same network so that all these containers can talk to each other then the next one is the mysql now again same thing we haven't specified docker file so we will specify the image okay which mysql is so going to get the mysql from the docker hub on the ports now uh, mysql runs by default on 3306 port but um, right now on my virtual machine on my local machine i am running the uh, mysql on on 3306 so it will not be able to work so that's the reason on the host machine i'm changing it to 3307 uh so yeah so we will be appointed to 3307 on this one and then again we want to restart always environment file again we're using the same environment file and we have specified the mysql root password and this is where we are picking as a as, as this is a specified in our environment file so it will pick as a this is a variable and this is a value so it's going to pick the, the the password which we have specified same network okay now coming to the volume so basically like a machine we want a persistent data if if i don't specify a volume when when you spin up a container of mysql it will work fine but when you let's say you we run our stock data dot sql we load all the we created the tables we create database we, we we load all the data but when you uh, stop that container you drop that container that it's going to lose everything because next time it's going to spin up again. That's what we definitely don't want to do. We want a persistent data. And in order to do that, the way it is that basically you specify a directory, I would say it is a directory you specify on the host machine. And then you point with this colon, you point this to uh, where is the MySQL data on its container, which is in the war lib and MySQL. So as you guys can see, there is a no MySQL folder right now over here on my host machine. But when I will run this one, it will create my SQL data. Uh, dot means it will going to create in the same. So it's going to create next to the Docker Compose basically at the same uh, level. And then if you create a folder and, with, and then that particular folder is available. So if anything I add into that one, it will be available in the container. So that's how it is a persistent storage. So next time when you put, uh, means make the container of MySQL down and you respawn it, then you will not lose any data. The next one is now, this one is like a mention in the start. What we don't want is to anyone to access the our MySQL via port. I know right now uh, we are, my host is only my local machine, but when we deploy to the production, whenever we put any port over here for the host, that port is open for a public. And uh, even if I put a firewall rule to to uh, stop that one, it will not work because Docker updates the IP tables. Uh, there is, uh, yes, I can go into and then fiddle around with IP tables, but then it messes a lot of things. So what we don't want to do, we, we want a secure we environment. We don't want anyone to access MySQL apart from us and apart from our application. So I am going to set up a SSL now 
uh, within the SSL, so way the it works is that within the when we run the MySQL container, it creates the certificates automatically. So when we will map this one, so all the certificates are in this one. When we map, you will see all these certificates. We need three certificates. One is uh, the, the, the root certificate. Then we have the so this is the uh, the server certificate is required for running and then it requires the server key as well but then there is a client certificate and client key generated as well uh, and that is the reason i have mapped the the same folder within the api because in order for uh, our application even to talk because when we make our mysql skill we say that we you you are only allowed for the ssl uh, handshake uh, it will not allow to to just uh, access uh, via the username and password it needs the ssl certificates so it, mysql uh, will got the certificates the server side but from the application and even from us when we will uh, try to connect it from our my work mysql workbench or or even command line we need to send the ssl certificate so that handshake can happen so that is the reason i've specified the volume same volume so it's going to because we will have the certificate in this volume and we're going to create the uh, mysql data again the folder on e this container as well as on this container so that it has access to the client certificates and then with the clients client certificates then we can call so i will uh, we need to change our uh, uh, web dot uh, our dbpy because here we are using our database so here we are getting a database connection and then within database connection right now we are not sending any ssl certificate right now we are only sending the username and password so it, it will fail uh, when we do that one so we need to do that as well so before that one so basically this command says it changes the mysql t and basically it specifies so uh, some of the character sets in the uh, collision server then it is binding to so that it's making publicly available but here it is the key one where it says require secure transport on so it needs the ssl certificate and it specifies okay where is the 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 server side of the certificates which is by default created by mysql in warlib mysql and as you know we have mapped warlib mysql with our mysql data so all all these certificates plus the client certificate will be available on the host machine and the, from the host machine, we're going to make it available to the API and web containers, and that's how the uh, it, it will work. Uh, then it can talk to each other. And then uh, the default authentication plugin is saying the MySQL native password. So it will need both. It will need the SSL certificate as well as the password. So that's how it is. So let me save this one. Now, this is this is our Docker Compose YAML. So when I will run this one, so this should uh, create a uh, containers for each of them and like i mentioned before it can work uh, with us we need to have the uh, i need to do the ssl uh, i need to give the ssl configuration and also right now this is working from the local environment so let me change this one and i'm going to see elif and our environment was docker so we created uh, docker yeah docker and then i'm going to say uh, okay, so these all would remain the same, but but we need to say the uh, we need to specify the SSL certificate in the by MySQL. So for dot one, what I need to do is, so I need I'll need to specify the SS sorry here SSL underscore CA. So for this one, I'm going to specify where is it where, where is our uh, root certificate so that is in then my sql data because that is the what we have created uh, that's what we are creating over here my sql data and my within the my sql data it is within the ca.pam so that is our this certificate then i'm going to specify the next one is ssl hundred code key this is now the client key so for the client key, I'm again where it is MySQL data and then client dash key dot pen. And then the next one, uh, so we have three like mentioned. So now we have the client certificate. So SSL uh, underscore cert 
and then it is my SQL data then it is client dash cert pub then, okay so now along with the password it tells okay these this is where the certificate is now of course right now we don't even have mysql data so we don't have these certificates but when it will uh, that's the reason in our docker compose we have given the dependency so we said that depends on mysql so that mysql container is up and running first it gets the mysql data uh, folder and then within the folder there are all the um, certificates and with those certificates when these uh, containers up and running then they can talk to each other so let uh, so i hope that makes sense i know there are a lot of things but when we will run i will have to run past once again so that is in our i've changed within the website so i need to change the same thing let me copy because i'm running two one is api as well as the application so here as well i will do is same thing so it's going to go by my by my sql connect uh, all the configuration then i'm sending the ca certificate um, client key and client certificate okay good okay so let's do so in order to run our uh, flask uh, sorry in docker compose uh, we need to be in the same folder where our docker compose is and let me make docker desktop uh, running as well okay our docker is now uh, running on the windows machine so let me do docker compose up and i'm going to run in a daemon mode so this is basically running a background rather than on the shell uh, so we read in done and then i'm going to build all my images again because uh, we have done the changes we have done changes in our code so let me quickly see if i actually okay we haven't changed the environment here so when uh, the python code going to run it will load that one and then uh, it will still look into this one so we haven't changed that so we need to change to that so let me change it rather than local we are using now the environment in the run pi and as well as in the web pi so okay okay so and then we are running the right ports and everything okay let's do it let's uh, make a start so let me do this so now it's going to fetch all the all the images which it needs to and then it will spun up the containers okay so all our containers are running as you can see one for mysql redis uh, one for api and one for website let's quickly have a look okay i will go to localhost and our api is running on 8080 so see it is running and then let's see if it is talking to um, our database it, it will be talking to database but actually we don't have the the data in the database so let's go to the mysql workbench and let me let's let's try to connect to our mysql within the docker and then we need to load the uh, database so i have this one but let me and also let's see if it has created mysql data uh, uh, folder now so let me grab c it has created all the data now and it has the client certificate cfm client cert and then it has a server certificate as well so that's how the persistent storage will work so everything it is mapped from the mysql container to our local host machine and then and this date uh, folder directory we have mapped to the api and the web so that it is available there as well and that's how it will access the the client certificate so we need to access the same thing so let me edit this connection and okay we're going to use on this um, yeah local host and it is on our uh, we pointed to 3307 we're going to use the root but on the ssl certificate i am going to let me i've done previously so it is the same one so this one is the ssl key and client certificate and certificate authority so in the client key it is this one and then within the client certificate it is client certificate and then here in the uh, certificate authority it is uh, not this one certificate authority okay so now i have done let's test the connection so my password was in code min 
dot dg okay yeah successful connection see so and i will actually show you let me do this one so let me connect first of all see now we are connected and as you can see there is a no stocks uh, database let me actually show you if i try to let me go to another uh, i have the hedi sql as well let me see if i try to run uh, try to connect it to the docker so it is one two seven and let's say yeah we use a u root and i am going to connect so in this one i am not going to give the ssl certificate so let's see if it connects it shouldn't so yeah see connection using insecure transport because we set in our docker compose the required rescue transport is on so we have to spy uh, supply the uh, the uh, certificate so if you don't have certificates we can't log in with the root password so which is great so that's how how we will secure that one so let's go back now we have our uh, SQL so let's load all the data so within this one you can go to the server data import import self-contained file so I'm going to specify if it is within a flask and then stock data and then I'm going to import progress and then start import okay our import is completed and if I refresh this you can see the stocks data is there and then all the tables are there so if I go to the API and if try to do Apple then it gets all the data and if I so now this our API was running on 8080 so if I try to open our web application if I go to 8081 and it loads all the data so that's how guys we can securely and that is the reason as you can see where we need the SSL certificate not only us application as well and that is the reason when we did the PyMySQL connection we had to provide uh, the SSL certificate and because this this API and the website is running in a container and in order for they, they to know where the certificate is that is the reason we mapped the MySQL uh, data folder within within our docker compose for api as well so then it copied all the stuff from here into the containers mysql data and from mysql data then it is having all the certificates for the connection so so next step we will set up our virtual machine and then we will uh, set up and uh, run this application in production but we have to do a couple of changes first of all we want to do uh, more replicas we want to make it more scalable so we'll run it more scalable and also right now it is because when we did more uh, containers we can't um, map it to the same port because then it, there will be error because that port is busy you can't uh, same port so that's the reason we will have the nginx proxy manager and then we will set up the domain have the ssl certificates and then we will do the load balancing so stay tuned guys